Hi everyone, welcome John here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can scrape live sports scores off of a website. Now, obviously this video is for educational purposes only, and the reason why I wanna show you this is because this is the main way that you're gonna get data from web scraping these days. It's by using the API endpoint that the website hits on their server to get the data back. I'll show you what I mean as we go through, and I'll show you exactly how I do all of it. So this is the website we're looking at, it's SofaScore. Um, and we can see that we have all the live uh, football scores on at the moment and it's, it's all updating in real time. On the right hand side of the screen, I have the inspect element tool open. We have the network tab open and I'm on the X XHR and fetch tab here in Chrome. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear all of this now and I'm going to refresh the page. And I'll show you all of these things that come up on this side and what ones to look for. So basically what we want to do is we want to have a look through these, find ones that look like they might mean something because in here we are going to find the end of the API where the JSON data is that this website is actually interpreting to display us this data. So I can see one right away. These ones say football, but this one here says live. And we can see that the URL there is slash API slash V1, which is quite common for a REST API. So I'm going to click on this here and it's going to bring up this other box. Now we'll just make this a bit bigger over here so we can see. What you want to do is you want to go to the response part and you'll see straight away whether the data is something that you're expecting back. Now it will be JSON data and I'm looking through all of this and I can see lots of information here, including team IDs, etc., etc. Now I know that this is the right place to come because we can see the first one is the Bundesliga and it says it here, etc., uh, etc. Et Another thing you can do is you can go to preview and you can preview the response. Sometimes this is there, sometimes it isn't. And we can see all of the events here that it has sent back. Now this is basically all the information that this website has asked the server for and it is displaying for us here. So I'm going to make this one bigger and we can see here is all the information about this current game. Who's playing, uh, where, and it will tell us somewhere here, home score and away score. There. So we can see that the home team is currently on three and the away score, the away team is on zero. And we can see it's represented here, three, zero. So what I'm gonna do is I can gonna copy this request out of our inspect element on the network tab and I'm gonna put it into Insomnia. Insomnia is a program for um, working with APIs. You can use Postman or any others that you feel like. I just use Insomnia now, it's just because of for no other reason than because. So we can see that it's updated itself here. So we have another one that's popped up, another live, but click on any one is fine. Right click, go copy, copy as CURL curl. And I'm gonna do the CMD version. I'm gonna copy that. And I'm gonna come over to Insomnia here and I'm gonna go new request. And we're gonna create it. We'll call it scores. So I remember what this was when I would look back at it later. And then all we do is paste the URL, everything that gave us into the get and we hit send. And we can see that Insomnia has split this up for us. It's given us the, the URL that we're hitting here. And we can see that the headers that we are sending with it. Now this is really important because we need to make sure all of these go, otherwise this isn't gonna work. It's also good to see, um, there's actually quite, there's actually not many headers on this request, but sometimes there are lots indeed. It does also, sometimes you can change some of these headers and it will give you different queries that you can make, um, but it, there aren't any in this case. We can see that we have this information now on this hand side, this side of the screen. It's actually just updated, so we did have the Bundesliga game at the top, but now we have the La Liga game. Let's go back and we can see that it's updated because this game has just started in between me looking at these two. So we can see that it works. Now obviously, we would have to re request this data again and again to see the actual live updates because we're just requesting a snapshot with our JSON, but that is definitely something that you could do. Again, I know that this website is um, protected. I think it's probably with Cloudflare. I think I've seen that somewhere in there. So if you hit this request too often, you will get blocked. But again, that's something you get around with rotating IPs, but this is not really about this data. This is about how to access how the best way to scrape data from any website really. So ignore the actual 
information, I suppose, and just work on the process. So what do you want to do now? Well, we want to get this into Python, into our code editor, so we can create some code that we can easily repeat. Now Postman does this as well, but Insomnia has it too. So we just right click on it and go generate code and select Python if you haven't done already and requests. And there it is, that's 15 lines of code. It includes our cookie. Now the cookie may expire at some point, but again, we could easily update that by requesting a new one or sort of sorting that out somehow. Uh, but again, for this example, the cookie is gonna last ample time for us. So I'm gonna copy all of this and I'm gonna put this into my code editor and we can see there's our URL, we're using requests and we are doing response is request.requests get, which is basically r is equal to request.get in a longer form. The URL, we are sending a payload. Now Insomnia and Postman both do this. There is no payload that we are sending, so it is empty. You can just delete that and the headers that we have to send. So now if I run this, we're gonna get all of that data in our terminal just dumped in there. Now this is a lot of information. The chances are that you probably don't want all of this. If you're just doing this for a personal project, you don't care about all of this information. You just want specific parts. Now my best advice to you is, whilst you are trying to work out what bits of information you want out of this JSON data, that you don't keep requesting it from the server because that's a quick and easy way to get yourself banned because you'll be working away going, oh, I mistyped this, request again. I missed, oh, no, no, that's not what I want, request again. And you'll just request so many times, it's not worth it. A good thing you can do, if you come back to Insomnia or Postman, somewhere around here, there is a save uh, raw response. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this onto my drive in the same folder as my Python file so we can open it. So I've saved that and I've saved it as a JSON file. And we can see that we've got all the information here. Now that's just a snapshot of this request and my VS code is complaining because it's so long. But what we can do now is we can actually just open this bit up and we can then work with our, the data that we've saved onto our local machine to make sure that when we're extracting the information we want from the JSON, that we get in what we want without making loads and loads of requests to the server. And then we can put it into our actual Py file. So I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call this one um, scores.json.py and I'm going to import JSON. And then I'm gonna say with open because I want to open this file uh, scores, I think I call it, yeah, dot JSON, JSON uh, as F, and then we can do JSON dot load because we want to load, not load S for load string, uh, F, and hopefully, let's save that to a variable, that's what we're gonna need. Let's call this one JSON data is equal to that, and then let's print our data just to make sure it's working, and there it all is. So now we have this file open in our Py file here, and we've saved it all to a JSON object. So now we can start to manipulate that. The easiest way to do that I find is when it's prettified, so you can see, maybe just look through in um, Insomnia or maybe, or wherever you can put it into a JSON parser online if you find that easier. But I can see right away that just by manipulating this, there is a events, key here and then a list of events. So we want to go ahead and do that first. So let's do events and then let's just get the first item in that list. And we can see that we've got that back here. So the next thing we want to do is find what information that we actually want. I'm going to try and keep it simple and I'm just going to say the tournament name, so the league, then maybe the home team, the away team, and the score, or maybe something like that. Okay, so let's go. Um, this will be the unique tournament. Where's the name? So we can, oh, tournament. So we can call the tournament key. Let's try that. Okay, and that works. So then we can do the name. So this should give us La Liga. Okay, so we know that this is going to equal the league for our specific one there. And the next thing that we want is the, so we've done in the tournament, so we want the home team underneath events, home team name, away team name. Okay, that's fine. So let's just copy this and we'll do home team. And it was 
home team name and then the same thing again but we'll do away team I think that's what they were called and let's try printing these now home team away team so it's not home team what is it called oh it's a capital okay fine it's in capitals case sensitive okay Celta Vigo Osasuna so that works and then the next one we want to want to do is somewhere around here home score current and away score current okay that should be nice and easy so we can do home score was it a capital again of course it was and current and then the away score like this so all I'm doing is basically I'm using the first item in the list which is why I've got these zeros here as my um, test so I'm making sure that I can get this data out using the um, calling the, the, the keys of the dictionary and then what we're going to do is we're going to cut this part off the front and we're going to do a loop for all of the items in the list and then we're going to print them all out okay so let's do home team home score and then let's make this a bit neater and let's just do something like that away team oh, the score should come first right away away score away team so this should look hopefully good okay fine that will do and we will include the league here as well league and we'll just print our little line in there cool so now we've formatted the information out of the JSON that we want we can go ahead and construct our loop to get all of that information that we've got and then we can put that back into our main pi file so when we run it we get all the current scores and data so to do that with this what i'm going to do is i'm going to not do that i'm going to come down in here i'm going to say for uh we'll call it match let's call it game actually in now this is the bit before the uh list so we want to do that and then we want to do the rest of these so i'm going to say home team if i'm going to copy all of this and then just edit out the bits that i need now we've already got this part in here because that's what we're looping through so we just need to remove that because that's the part that we're looping in here i'm going to comment that out and we're going to go ahead and print this underneath and then we just need to put the word game in front of each of these because that is what we are referencing it so if I've done nothing wrong, well, that's a first. I usually have something wrong in there. We can see that we've got all of the games here. So I made the reason why it looks like they're all La Liga games, but they're not, is because I've still included the league data from up here where I'm calling it for the first one. So I did actually make a mistake. I got a bit too uh, carried away there. Let's go ahead and put league in here. And we'll do exactly the same thing as we did before. It's equal to, and then game paste that part in now when we run this we can see that we get all of the competitions as well so that's a nice and easy way to do all of this so i'm going to just going to copy this and i'm going to put it into my live file i'm going to paste it in here and now what we need to do is we need to import json as well let's do that now and then we want to do our json data which is what we've called down here is equal to the response dot text so now if I save that and run this, we're going to make an actual request to the server. And I've made an error somewhere because I need to do is equal to json.loads. And now in this case, we need to load s. We need to load the string because we're getting the string back. Whereas when we're importing a file, we can do it with just load. So this should work for us. And there we go. Those are all the up-to-date scores for all of those games that are currently on now. So now obviously there's a lot more you could do with this. But I wanted you guys to sort of kind of, this should be the first thing that you look for when you're trying to scrape a website. You need to have a look into that network tab and try and find 
the information there because it's going to make your life so much easier. You see, all of this data I got back would just not have been accessible or easily accessible at all from trying to actually scrape the actual front of the page with either HTML or um, trying to render it with render the JavaScript or anything like that. It's just not that straightforward. It's not the best approach. The best way is to always look in that network tab and get that data that way. So again, thank you very much for watching. Um, hopefully you've learned something and you've got some value out of this. Uh, if you have, let me know in the comments section down below and leave a like. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, which is all over the place at the moment. Um, but let me know what you think and uh, if this has been useful to you. Don't forget to subscribe as well. I've got loads of web scraping content on my channel and more to come. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.